general government and school uh, budgets. So I think this is uh, a worthwhile expense that should yield, in my opinion, savings. It's my endorsement too. A large bu budgetary item that increases double digits every year. It's out of control, and we just sort of find a way to rein it in. So money well spent. Has my endorsement. Proceed forward, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Mine as well. <coughs> Definitely the right thing to do. Good. Yeah, no, I concur. I think it's uh, even if it were a full-time position, the human resources uh, person, it just in and of itself would not provide enough resources and uh, the expertise to uh, adequately evaluate and advise the town administrator or the board. So I think it's it's a good idea. Um, who's the outfit? A company called EBS Foreign. That's E. B S initials and F O R A N would be and what I'd like to do is uh, when they complete their evaluation I'd like to have them come in and, and meet with you about their findings I think it's important for them to brief the board and uh, at least give you an opportunity to understand what their analysis is. The company's located in Worcester, by the way. Okay, uh, with that, if there's any more questions about that, we'll come back. <coughs> now uh, a little past the hour 745 and uh, I'll open the hearing on the McIntyre Crossing subdivision uh, those that might have uh, come in, uh, in the past 15 minutes or so uh, we have already discussed the McIntyre Woods uh, subdivision and <coughs> have continued the hearing till uh, April uh, yeah April <laughs> October 4th <laughs> at 6.10 uh, p.m., and that will be at the uh, middle school. Uh, in high, high, school. high school. I'm sorry. High, yes, high school at, uh, what was the I think room? it's B109, I think. <laughs> Say that again. B109. B109. I believe. It could be 108, but it might be 109. 6.10. At 6.10 p.m. On the... Uh, McIntyre Crossing Subdivision, Chris. <coughs> um, the um, Habitat Incorporated is, is contracted to bring in their uh, folks this week to finish up. They've got some overlay work to do. Um, there's, uh, I know there's one driveway apron that needed to be repaired and one drainage grade at the same location. That's already been, they've already begun that work. They've They've begun a couple other things right at Mac, uh, right on McIntyre Drive, but they're uh, bringing their people in. And uh, George from uh, Habitat uh, is here. He can tell you what's going on. But they're supposed to be in this week to finish it up. Okay, th that's with respect to what we call the general the punch, punch list. list. That's general punch list. But on the drainage issue, Dave Mr. Giagarandi. Good evening. Um, again, for the record, I'm David G. Grande. I'm a PE in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And uh, I represent the uh, town of North Reading and the planning board on all of these subdivisions. And um, as the remediation is going on in these subdivisions, I'm out inspecting and making sure that it meets the, uh, um, the specifications that we set for. Uh, I was asked to look at briefly. Um, a, a brown boundary line between the, the greens, uh, Thompson Country Club, as some of us old timers know it as, uh, and uh, McIntyre. And there was a concern by the citizens um, at the greens that water was running off of McIntyre and um, across uh, the, the uh, roadway here at the greens. This is the just <coughs> down here in the roadway. And uh, this is the development of tar blocks. This is the cul-de-sac up at the very top of tar blocks. There's a large wetland here. So what we did is we reviewed um, Hayes' uh, um, uh, drainage calculations from 1996. We found um, uh, in our review that uh, the, the drainage calculations were done uh, and met the performance standards at that time. We found that um, there was no increase in runoff for the 5, 10, 50, and 100 year storms. We had a very minor, almost de minimis um, runoff increase for the two year storm. 
those are those would be um, high intensity, low duration storms. So it's hard to meet all of the storms and not have any increase, but um, again, slight increase that may across here. <coughs> Then we took a look at, okay, that was permitted for um, moderate development. You have to make assumptions because none of the homes are out there, the size of the disturbed area, the size of the homes, um, and other amenities on the property. So what we did is almost an as-built <coughs> drainage comp, okay? And we looked at uh, the development areas with these homes, pools, sports courts, batting cages, longer driveways, more um, uh, green space in front here. And what we found out is that we still had that slight increase for the two-year storm, but now with the as-built, we also had uh, a slightly larger increase for the five-year storm and still an increase in the 10-year storm. The, the larger storms, the 50 and 100-year storms, again, decreases in runoff. So when we, when we look at the performance standards for the 50 and 100 year storm, um, it's, it's, uh, it's still in line. So <coughs> considering that uh, and trying to figure out the, what we could do, these, these runoff increases are, are pretty um, mild, minor increases. Um, Hayes had put out a, um, a solution, a, um, that uh, I met with the Greens and they were not um, uh, real uh, happy with that particular type solution. We have looked at another way of mitigating this is potentially putting a swale right along the edge of the property here. Uh, I think that would be the best way to handle that in the future would be more of a passive or low impact type of uh, drainage mitigation. Speaking with the Greens, I think that uh, they were in tune with that particular solution, and uh, as long as we can get the abutters here uh, to, to join in and provide us with an easement, I think that would be a quick, easy solution, a passive solution, and, uh, and I think all parties would be, would, would, would be happy with that solution. David, how many uh, abutters would be involved in that? Uh, uh, it's predominantly this abutter, the, the property line, we have an easement, a water easement that comes underneath, or, or I'm not sure if it's a, this pipe is directly underneath the batting cage, uh, but we have an easement along here, and then it would be predominantly on this abutter's property, there's a very large parcel that ranges out in that general direction. So it really would be one abutter that we <coughs> have sign on, and um, uh, in, in general, the amount of the development of these two parcels in particular, but this one, uh, you know, this mitigation would be to, um, to provide for the size of the development that they, that they have here. Uh, Dick, have you looked at this? And are you in agreement with uh, Mr. Giagrandi, or you are? If you look at the uh, Cost. I mean, to whom and how much? Um, yeah, I, we 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 asked to we estimate the cost at approximately ten thousand dollars. That would be just tree clearing, some minor excavation, um, and and then a connection into the uh, catch basin as an overflow uh, that is right adjacent to this. So again, it's a passive solution. And I think what it will do is we will get some infiltration, which helps in stormwater management and, and recharging of the Ipswich River watershed, which I think is always a positive. I have a question. Mr. Prisco. Uh, one, one second, sir. Mr. Prisco. I just had a question on your presentation. Um, the property that you talked about, you mentioned the sports court, and then I think somebody else had a pool. So I guess I have to assume that those items weren't part of the original design for those properties? We have a pool here, a sports court, 
a back cage with uh, a non-permeable surface and a, it looks like a cabana and a, another pool of gear. So in your, I know you didn't say this, but I have to assume based on your presentation that that's causing some of this additional runoff. Yeah, I think, I think that um, development uh, in disturbing areas that were wooded and, and you know, woodlands, uh, anytime you disturb those, we increase the runoff and it needs to be mitigated. We mitigate our subdivisions uh, in the roadway, right. but, and, and consider the development <coughs> of the lot to a moderate level. This is significant. So Hayes Engineering and Habitat originally set it up correctly, and now it's been altered. And now is there like a zoning, bo well, zoning board change or something that, had well, but that required Habit that or allowed well, that? they got a permit, so the permitting was okay, but, but Habitat developed these two lots, correct? Correct, they did. Right. But they didn't, no, they didn't put the, two, the pools in. The sports the court. Sports court and all the other. All could the be other the things cage. behind. They didn't, they didn't build the pool with the house? No. no the Most of the habitat was yeah, covered with a community pool uh, that backs up to Riverside Cemetery. That's a little ways away from here, though. Well, <laughs> but that was, that was the whole Walked out of there with your towel over your shoulder. That's kind of <laughs> what I'm getting at. It, it seems like there was a lot of altering to, to the property after the sale from Hayes or from uh, Habitat that has now altered and caused this problem. Now, I'm assuming permits had to be pulled. Someone approved the plans. Not us. Okay, so now here we are. We're going to go and fix a problem that someone else created. It just doesn't seem to make sense to me. And it seems it's going to cost a lot of people a lot of money for someone else's altering of the property inappropriately. Uh, first of all, the gentleman from Habitat, you wanted to no, say no, something, and then there's a woman in the back. Mr. Okay. Ogren, Hayes Engineering. Yeah, actually, it's not, I'm not from Habitat, I'm oh, Hayes okay. Engineering. My name is Peter Ogren, and I'm actually oh, yes, the, Peter, I'm the president of yeah. Hayes Engineering. Um, you know, I think what uh, Mr. Prisco said is, is true, um, but Bruce Wheeler has been looking towards getting this problem solved so that he could move forward. It's obviously holding up a much bigger issue in terms of the street acceptance from McIntyre Crossing, which is a large development. And we've come up against the same complaints from the Greens each time. Now, I can tell you that I was the one that stood before town meeting 25 years ago to propose the Greens development. We're the ones that did the, the hydraulic runoff there. We did anticipate that water would flow from the Millen property. In fact, the Millen property was represented at town meeting when that rezoning went through. Um, but in order to move things on, Bruce and I have made an offer to work with the club and work with David and come up with a, a three-way split of what all of the costs involved might be, which would be some of the hydraulic analysis that the, the uh, Greens has asked for, uh, the solution, whether it be that solution or another solution that we've looked at, which is in kind of the range of what uh, your public works director talked about in terms of, of cost, uh, in order to, to be able to move forward. Basically, we sent a written uh, proposal to the Greens back on Friday after a meeting with them on Thursday uh, proposing this and stating that we would do a three-way split and that we would move forward with uh, some type of solution. I think in order to move forward with a solution with the abutters, we're going to need some help from uh, probably the Conservation Commission. I think that, that basically what Judge Gallagher from uh, Habitech has said is true, that a lot of this work proceeded without permits. We have tried to reach out several times to the two landowners here in terms of the, the um, I guess I'd call it the intensity of the development in their backyards and also where they have some drainage, which I think maybe downspouts may drain some of the patio areas from the pool, and they haven't been cooperative. I think if there's a nudge from the Conservation Commission realizing that there are some outstanding issues and that if they cooperate with us in terms of use, doing this swale solution, um, everybody will be able to, you know, sort of uh, come out of it and be able to move on. So. Uh, that's where it stands as far as uh, Bruce's uh, offer and, and essentially our offer to the to the uh, Tom to the club. Just um, Bruce couldn't be here this evening, but he asked me to get up and explain that to the board of select. Mr. O'Leary. My point to the suggestion here is, you know, why should the, uh, uh, the people at the Greens be subject to any expense? They're the harmed party. Oh, I, I would disagree. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that they're necessarily a harmed party. And in fact, uh, much of the water that comes out of this pipe and goes down here is, is water from the Greens itself. Um, 
uh, a large